today is a beautiful, warm, sunny day here at Disney Springs at Walt Disney World. And we're here for a fun afternoon. I'm gonna bring you along. We're gonna try some food, some drinks. There's all sorts of fun stuff going on. So I figure, let me bring you some sunshine and just have a fun night. Look at that. The car boats out there. I did that recently. Those run out of Boathouse. So if you wanna see a video on that, I did it. <laughs> I did it. Woo, it's warm. I feel like a cold beverage of some sort would help to like start start the day right. The is on the surface of Mars. Ah. comes from the engineering cameras. Oh my god. Hazard camera. Uh, this camera is mainly used So exciting. So I've also been watching live NASA Perseverance land on Mars. That was so exciting. I'm like walking around watching it. If any of you are watching it too, go Perseverance, that's awesome. Last time I was here was my first visit here and I had a donut and it was really good, but I didn't get to try the coffee and it's so cool, I love watching. I love like bakery type places where you can watch what's going on in the window. Look at that, wow, it's like cinnamon toast crunch. Those look nuts. But anyway, it was cold that day, so I didn't want to drink a cold drink, but today it is warm. So I do want to try one of these cold coffees. They have these cold brew classics, spiked coffees, a huge menu of these, so I definitely want to try one. There's a huge array of really colorful, beautiful donuts. I went with a cold brew classic. I got the vanilla hazelnut. Thank you. They also do a pass holder discount, so if you're a Disney World annual pass holder, make sure you mention that. Vanilla hazelnut cold brew. It's one of their classic cold brews. Wanna sit outside? The outside patio looks cute, right? I love this patio. It feels like you're at like a barbecue. Everglaze guests, this is us. We're the guests. All right, let's try the vanilla hazelnut. The like slats on the roof, the like grass walls and the grass beneath and the bright colors. It really feels like you're at like a backyard barbecue, like a really cool backyard barbecue. Delicious. Delish. It's hazelnut. It's actually not overly sweet. It's just perfect. I am very happy with this. They also have spiked coffees. We'll have to come back for that one day. Doesn't it feel like summer already? I didn't know they had spiked coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Nate, we gotta come back for those, okay? We're gonna come back and sample those spiked coffees. Maybe know. later tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I just love the whole color scheme. And of course it's you know it's ever glazed, so that's a play on the Everglades, the Florida Everglades, and they've got a nice uh, Florida depicted up there, and the D is like South Florida-ish, the Everglades would be kind of down where the D is. I also like how there are like uh, shaved hazelnuts on top of the whipped cream. I don't know if they do anything for the flavor, but they sure do look cool. That was a lot of fun. I really like the vibe of Everglades. I, I said in the last video, like I'm not a huge donut person, but I do love the iced coffee and people who love donuts say that the donuts are great. So if you love donuts, I mean, you're gonna get a huge variety here. And it's just a really fun place to hang out. And that iced coffee was more. And like I said, they have spiked iced coffee. So I'm definitely gonna come back for that. I also like that they play like 90s rock in there. It feels like a, like a cool hip place like from Miami or South Florida. So cool Everglades, great times. And I love the whole like outside patio vibe. The aerophile balloon hasn't gone up into the air the whole time that we've been here. And I heard them talking to some guests and saying that like the winds were too high today. It doesn't look that windy, but I guess it is. I mean, they know their safety better than we do. Maybe it'll be running later though, you never know. It just really all depends on conditions. I love Disney Springs, and I really love the whole backstory and how it all ties together. Growing up in Florida, I, you know, visited downtown Disney and all its many incarnations and iterations through the years, and I've always really liked it. It's, you know, a fun shopping and dining entertainment district connected to Walt Disney World. I liked watching the whole re-theming to Disney Springs. I love the whole like Florida Springtown and all of that. And I like that it ties back to the Adventurers Club from Pleasure Island. But I feel a little bit of remorse that I never got to fully experience Pleasure Island in all its glory. I remember always thinking like, oh, that's for grown-ups. Like, I just want to go ride rides at Disney World. Like, let's just have lunch and go. And now, obviously, I am a grown-up, so I would have loved 
that and I just kind of like try to soak in whatever little pieces I can at the like vestiges of Pleasure Island that remain. But we're just trying to soak up as much of the daylight as we can before it turns to evening. We've got a really fun night planned. It looks like the sunset might be hidden tonight behind some clouds, but it's really, really beautiful out. I can hear the music from Raglan Road from here. Since tonight I've got sort of Pleasure Island on the mind and we have kind of a fancy tasting coming up later, we decided to pop into Morimoto Asia. As I was saying, the backstory of Disney Springs and the tie into Pleasure Island, we're about to learn a little bit of the story here at Morimoto and how it ties into the Disney Springs story. So see the chandeliers here, they look like fish traps because it's like, you know, there's sushi and, and fish and seafood here. And then really? the back walls are made out of mushroom wood. Oh wow, and mushroom like wood. This white bar here is like the longest bar ever. It goes all around the restaurant and curves all the way around. The story behind this structure, this building, they all have like a backstory that ties into the Disney Springs town, is that this is right in the heart of Disney Springs and this building is the factory where they bottle up the springs water. The sun shines off of all of the glass surfaces everywhere. The lighting is so beautiful. So we just got a little tour of the second floor, but we're gonna go down to the first floor bar. I love this, this is so pretty. I'm gonna go ahead and have an egg roll for a little snack to start off the night. I really love the egg rolls here. There's also Morimoto street food outside where you can just like grab and go or sit in their little outdoor area and I love to do that too, but since we're in here in this beautiful atmosphere, I think it's egg roll time. Thank you so much. Oh, look at those steaming. All right, so I switched from egg roll to dumpling because my server told me how delicious they are and you know, I love dumplings. Look at the steam coming off of them. They look gorgeous. Oh my gosh. This is a lovely, I love Marimoto. It's just good. It's just good. The dumplings were really tasty. They're a really nice light snack. I love the vibe in here. There's a lot of atmosphere. It kind of transports you. I feel like I'm like traveling somewhere. I don't know, somewhere cool. It's definitely got like a cool, classy vibe. I just really like it. I definitely want to come back here and do like a full dining experience video. I've, I've eaten here many times, but I've never put it on video. Got to remedy that. All right, all done. See, here's the start of the water bottling decor. That is so, so cool. It's really beautiful. It like carries to the whole restaurant. At night, this is all lit up and it's one of the coolest walls in Disney Springs. My goodness gracious, look at that sky. It is officially spring in Florida. I mean, pretty much summer almost. Talking about the history of downtown Disney, Disney Springs and Pleasure Island, the Edison ties into all of that really strongly. This is the building that was the Adventurers Club, which was like the heart of Pleasure Island from what I understand. And again, I grew up in Florida. I, I was here at Downtown Disney. I remember Pleasure Island being a thing. I just sadly did not take part or appreciate it for what it was at that time. I wish that I would have. But we are gonna come back to the Edison in a little bit. We're gonna revisit this a little bit later this evening because we're gonna do something else first. Before we head into the Edison, we're gonna stop into Enzo's Hideaway, a really cute tucked away spot. We gotta go down to a secret chamber to get there. I don't know why I said chamber. It's not a chamber, but it is kind of like a speakeasy situation. A little secret thing. Do we need a secret knock to get in? See, this would be like the secret Oh, it doesn't. Oh no, so you do it right, you do this. And then they go. And then you can come into the hideaway. Just to be cool, we'll call it the hideaway for short. Secret, keep the secret knock secret too. It's all, everything is secret. It's all secret. This pillar, secret. It's all secret. The whole theme here is a speakeasy vibe. It all ties in together. Let's find out more. It's a prohibition era. Paraphernalia on the wall, candles on the tables. Let's go find my, my pal who's in here already. He's got a seat, he's excited. 
So tying into the whole backstory of Disney Springs and Pleasure Island, this area actually I read used to be a green room for some of the actors and performers here from the Adventurers Club. If that's not right, let me know because I'm tracking down info piece by piece basically, but that would be really cool. But the story, the theme story behind this is that Maria and Enzo purchased upstairs and they didn't know that underground there was like a speakeasy and like a rum smuggling operation. But then Enzo found out and was like, I'm getting in on this. This is my hideaway. So it's now Enzo's hideaway and it's all Prohibition era themed, really cool. And I just got, I asked them what is the most popular sort of light fruity drink that's not too strong and heavy and they told me it was this limoncello drink. This is a limoncello giblet. It's monkey 47 gin, caravella limoncello, and simple syrup and thyme. Look at how the like lights reflect on the top because it's so smooth and glassy. The limoncello giblet. You know what every time I hear giblet, I think Turkey? of Kimmy Gibbler. Oh. Kimmy Gibbler? <laughs> the Gibbs? The from, Gibbler? From Full House. Yeah, all right. Oh, the coaster stuck to it. Oh my God, be careful. <laughs> okay, let's try this. It already smells like a lemon drop, it smells like candy. Mm. You know those candies, lemon drops? That is what this tastes like in liquid form. It's sweet, but not too sweet. It's lemony, but not overly tart. It, it really is like a, like a nice sweet lemonade. It's, it's good with gin. And gin is very like, gin blends into anything that you mix it with. And gin goes very well with like watermelon, lemon, like light, fruity, summery types of flavors. It's filled to the top, so I'm trying to be careful not to spill it. I took a big gamble wearing a white shirt tonight. So far, shirt has remained stain-free. Let's see if we can keep it that way all night. Mm. Salud. Look at this guy with his hat and his cool outfit. He's definitely pouring some ill-begotten goods into that cup. So now we're really gonna go through the secret hideaway. So you see this room lined with wine bottles, and it looks like, you know, it's just maybe restrooms over here, very, like you can't even really see what's going on here. Looks like nothing. And then you go into this hallway, knock before entering, cast members only, hand sanitizer. This looks like a totally nondescript hallway, nothing to see here, folks. But behind this door, Lies the Edison. It's a secret passageway, but now I have to finish the melody. Two bits, or else that drive me crazy all day. And now we are here in the Edison. You can hear the music, hear the clanging of dishes. I hear live music. And the theme here is that this was a power plant, so they've got plant operators only on the, like instead of cast members only door. I love that. two levels, there's live music tonight. The vibe is high vibe. In preparation for this tasting, I am drinking a lot of water. We'll also be having some food and bites in between, and we also plan for a ride home after this, so it's gonna be good. Ready? Ready? All right, everyone, this is PJ, the alcohol alchemist, bartender here at the Edison who came up with the high roller menu that we're about to get to try? Like, what inspired you to do this? Um, we just have a lot of creative freedom here at the Edison, and it's really awesome. They let us experiment. Um, there's a lot of collective experience behind the bar, and we love to play and tinker, and we love when guests challenge us, so please feel free to come in and ask us to make you something off menu. Ooh, um, the then, challenge has been thrown out there. Exactly, it's open door <laughs> challenge. Um, one of the drinks speaking of challenge is a competition drink of mine. Oh. Um, tea time with Prudence has a very uh, interesting story we'll get into a little bit later, but okay. um, yeah, that was uh, that was one of my competition drinks. The other two are really successful experiments, so Ooh. I'm excited to hop to it with you guys. Oh my gosh, yes! All right, so we're gonna start with the Gilgamesh. This is the Sincoro Reposado, baking spice, toasted oak, blended with bold encho and habanero warm, balanced by a gentle kiss of smoothness. <laughs> that is so cool. 
drink with caution. Okay, so I thought you took this out, and he says you can before you can hold the whole thing. This is <laughs> delicate balance. It smells like I can smell the bitters. I smell the warmth. Wow. definitely a spice there's like that gingery spice type of a thing wow it's really intense and interesting there's that orange kick there's that warmth there's that heat I'm gonna go ahead and take it out look at how cool that glass is you can't balance that glass like you need it in the other in the bowl see the bowl with the chilies It's really strong. It's got kind of like a vanilla-y and peppery taste. That is really good and really interesting and really unique. Next up is the Tea Time with Prudence, to which I can't not get that Beatles song, Dear Prudence, out of my head now. Speaking of songs, there's a live performer back up on stage, which I love. It gives it so much atmosphere. So the Tea Time with Prudence is an expertly sipsmithed Jop Martini. There's so many words, so many hard to pronounce words, but we're doing our best here. Love letter to all the gin drinkers out there. Spirit forward, earthy, aromatic, with fresh brewed Earl Grey tea. This glass though, like this glass is so beautiful. I smell an earthy forest. Mm. It's complex flavors. You first bring it up to your nose, you smell that earthy smell, you smell the forest, the rosemary, almost like a pine scent. And when you drink it, there's there's like a warm... Earl Grey has bergamot oil, I believe, in it, so I think I can like taste that bergamot oil type of flavor. It's really complex. I'm gonna... I need... I need new terminology. It's just like when I visited Wine Bar George and I was tasting all these wines, I learned a lot of new terminology that night for describing wine. I'm gonna have to ask PJ for some terminology for this because I'm kind of at a loss. Okay, so that is the oil of a lemon peel expressed over the top of a drink that I think I'm tasting. So it's a lot of earthy natural flavors mixed in there. Really incredible, one of a kind drink. Let's move on to the next. Now I'm gonna try the Silk and Lace. This is decadent, silky smooth, complex cocoa and vanilla notes infused into a red berry forward Ruby Porto. Calm the bold bourbon profile from Edison's own Maker's Mark, Private Select Old 19, and culminate into a true experience in a glass. So this is like, like a chocolatey, oh my gosh. It smells like velvety. Mm. That's the one. That's the one. They're all amazing. Uh, this one is, it goes down so smooth. I feel like I could drink this. Like the others, I feel like are sippers. This one, I feel like I could drink too fast. But I'm gonna take my time. I'm not gonna drink it too fast. But that is incredible. Do you see that like rich chocolatey color? It tastes just like it looks. So if you like like a chocolatey, like porty type of a drink, you're gonna like this one. I think this is the winner for me, so. I don't know, what do you think? What do you think like would be the winner for you? Like just from the description of the flavor. It's like, oh, so good. These drinks are specific to the Edison. They were created and crafted here. The ingredients in them are sourced from here in Disney Springs. So they're truly a unique Disney Springs type of drink. And these are real cocktails. These are high level, next level, elevated drinks that you're not gonna get anywhere else. A truly unique drinking experience and something that you will remember. I feel like these are very memorable drinks. I, I feel honored that we get to taste them, really. The bacon! Oh, the Look bacon! Oh, I'm so happy. Do you remember, Nate, last time we had this? I couldn't get it off the, yes. I couldn't get it off the clothespin and I needed your help. Jackie, I still have my clothespin. <gasps> I wanted to keep mine and I, I didn't. I kept my clothespin, it's, it's at my house. I'm gonna keep one this time. Yep. This time I'm, I'm keeping one. This is a beautiful one. I could not get it off the clothespin and Nate had to help me last time. That bacon. It's so good. You gotta get it in that sauce though. The sweet sauce, like it's- I did, I did. It it's good. a little thing. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Mmm, oh, it's so good. Here's the calamari. I've been wanting to try this here. I wanna get some lemon on this. You have enough lemon? Oh yeah. 
I love just dripping lemon on here. Okay, so there's like a spicy looking sauce and a creamy looking sauce. Probably gonna like the creamy, but let's just try the spicy and just see how it is. Mmm. Mmm. It's not too spicy. It's really good. Both of the sauces are good. The calamari is delicious. I am going to go ahead and devour that. Yeah. All right, so PJ says the pro tip with the bacon is cut it in half. It's so sticky. Wrap a bacon in the middle. I mean, a bacon. Wrap a pickle in the bacon. Oh, already I love this. And then dip it in the, the sweet sauce here. Go. Is that it? Mm -hmm. That's the trick? Mm -hmm. That's the move. That is... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look at... The interior of the Adventurers Club. Every day it's tearing me apart. Oh, I wish I could have experienced it. Did you know that Dolly Parton, they asked her to be in this film, 9 to 5, and she said, I'll only be in it if I can write the theme song. And they were like, sure, Dolly, of course. She wrote 9 to 5, smash hit, was amazing in the movie. God love, God love Dolly, God love her. All of their appetizers, all of their drinks, their service, they're just next level on every level. And I love that there's live performance back, live music. They don't have the like dancers yet, back yet, but one day, one day. But in the meantime, I'm really glad to see live music here. That makes me really, really happy. That's a wrap last night. It was so much fun. Fun. I love Disney Springs and it's whole brand new theming. Well, it's not brand new. It's been many many years But looking back at downtown Disney Pleasure Island the theming and the story behind the restaurants that are here today and how they tie back They sort of harken back to downtown Disney and that whole history and story I hope you guys had a ton of fun. There is so much fun stuff to come So make sure you stay tuned and if you're new, please subscribe to join in all the fun. I'm sending you all lots and lots of love. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you for the next video. And until then, as always, stay enthused. Bye.